How you doing, everyone? It is time for a five-minute paranormal. I'm T. I'm Phil. And I'm going to actually turn the wheels over to Phil because he wants to pick my brain about what happened in that first automatic writing session. In fact, in all the automatic writing sessions that I've done so far because this is brand spanking new territory it is for new territory. both of us. It is new territory. So... So, Bring it, Phil. Well, I'm going to go off by just, I want to say this <laughs> right at the very beginning. Okay. This could be a one hour long Don't Turn Around <laughs> episode. So I'm going to try to be focused and That's we'll give you, you a taste. Cross promotion, and then, and then, then we'll get T Talk a little bit longer about this yeah. and some of his other experiences. Sure. But first thing I want to know is what inspired you to give this a shot? <laughs> well, because when you said this to me, I was a bit. I was a little surprised because it was more on the Mulder side of the yeah, spectrum. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. What was the tipping point for me was an investigation done by Spooky AF Productions. That's mm -hmm. Selena Spooky Boo and, and Call Me Chris. And the two of them were at the comedy club, the, the infamous comedy mm -hmm. club that... Um, there was some shady dealings with yeah. a mob involved yeah. and things like that. Yeah. And at one point, Selena was doing the writing and Chris was doing the questioning. And at one point, Chris taps out Selena and Selena rips off her mask and cocks back as if she's going to punch her. Damn. And I remember jumping in my seat at that and, and going... And thinking, finally, I could have a reason to punch Phil on camera. Exactly. Okay. Because it's content, baby. <laughs> Um, no, 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 no. This is, a, this is a legit question. I mean, I was so, I was like, what was that? And right before then, right before then, she had taken the piece of paper that she had just written on. Um, and going back to the earlier joke, she, she dropped the B-bomb towards Chris, who was asking her questions at the time. And then she took the paper and just crumpled it up with one hand. It was visceral. I had never seen a, a writing, a, a, an automatic writing session like this. Now, I should also point out the other thing I, that was that was new to me was that Chris was doing it, or sorry, Selena was doing it, and eventually Chris does it in another investigation, yeah. where they did it a little bit like an Estes method, where they were blindfolded, but all they did was listen to white noise, not mm -hmm. nothing mm -hmm. cycling through the spirit box. They were just listening to white noise. They had a mask on, and they were just writing whatever came to mind. Mm -hmm. Now. You mentioned Cindy Kaza mm -hmm. and how she does it, and mm -hmm. then there's uh, Valerie Gazold Ford, friend of the mm -hmm. friend of the of, of the uh, of the show, and of OSI, and she does it in that similar way where she just starts writing a pattern and then she can do it, you know, completely open. Yeah. I don't think I have psychic skills. I don't think I have that ability with the third eye. But I'm a writer. I write what comes to mind. And I thought, well, if I'm in a situation or setting like the Octagon Mansion, Balladary Inn, coming soon, the old hospital on College Hill, I think I could just get into a zone and just see what comes to mind while I'm in that space. Because as a writer, my environment matters. I mean, I can write oh, yeah. in a coffee shop. I can write in certain places. I can't write when the television's on, you know? Yeah, I oh, no. But, but yeah. it, it just... It, Kind of that was kind of the what what led me down was yeah. seeing Selena do it in that style, seeing Chris do it in that style, and then kind of looking at it from a writer's perspective and going, yeah, I think I could do this, and that's what led to yeah. what happened. At and the, at and the and so we decided yeah. we would try it at the Octagon Mansion at five eight five, mm -hmm. which I'm not going to pass judgment on whether that was a good or not so good idea. Well, but yeah, what. <laughs> In the moments you were getting ready to go under, we took a little while to get things kind of configured, yeah. and then you're you're getting ready to pull the eye shield down and mm -hmm. put pen to paper. Headphones are on, and it's it's go time. Right. In those in those dozen seconds before you started writing, what was going on in your head? What were you feeling? I was terrified. Yeah. Because not necessarily because I was opening myself up to something that I that didn't even occur to me. Until I sat down with Nick Spencer. Yeah. And they gave me, I don't want to say a wag of the finger, but sort of a side eye because they were like, you don't know what you're opening up yourself up to. 
they are also aware of my Christian background. They're also aware of my, my, my thoughts and feelings about uh, religion and, and these, these topics that we are now dealing with head on. Mm -hmm. they, they said to me, you really don't know what you're, you're opening yourself up to. And I go, no, I don't, but I'm trying to be as careful as possible. And they said, and you are, um, you know, but you still have to understand what it is you're doing here. And I do to an extent, but yeah, I was terrified because one, I had no idea what was going to happen. Two, if this blew up in my face, then I'm like, well, I'm never doing that again. And it would make for, for subpar content. But I will pause you there too, okay. though. I mean, I don't, f I don't, I feel our philosophy that we should aspire toward because mm. it's not always going to be this way. Oh no! But that when we go out in the field and we try something new, we're trying something new to try something new, regardless mm -hmm. of what the outcome is. I mean, because, yeah. and it did not in this case because I think there was a power greater at hand in here. <laughs> but That's going in, putting it lightly, because. Going in with, you know, even just the slightest expectation of, well, if this doesn't work out, then this is going to be a waste of 10 minutes. Right. It's going to be shite content can influence the experience. Right. But as we saw in the episode, none of that fear at least influenced you getting things through no, whatever I, you were channeling. And that was, that was what was, what, when I look back on the, on the different places I've done it, it's been very different. Um, I'm still apologizing for some of the stuff that I wrote uh, with Pip being around. I'm still apologizing for that. And, and That's called a teaser, folks. Yep, that's a teaser. You'll, that's a you'll teaser. learn more about that when we reveal the college on Hospital Hill. Yeah. Or the old college on the hill with the hospitals. <laughs> that place. That place. <laughs> um, but as far as, as, far as the, the, the mood at each place was mm -hmm. different, the Balladary Inn. It was. It was. Uh, the the. I think the, the the one that that freaked me out the most was that I I didn't know that Pip was getting up and moving around. And mm -hmm. at one point, I felt I felt the urge to write, "Please sit down." Yeah. And she had just gotten up from her chair and walked over to the camera. And I'm watching this footage, and then I was like, "Oh, wow!" And then there's the the the, the what happened at uh, at the. Um, Octagon Mansion. It was just there. There was a. I honestly was not expecting those kind of results. And, and yeah. And then of course there's the the last moment, where I say done. Paratech comes up with I can't do this anymore. And then we pick up an EVP saying yes. The, but that was again, <laughs> one of those Pow. moments. I mean yeah, yeah. That you don't really you don't get to right until. You ha it happens in the moment, and right. it's it's astounding. But then when you come back around to it, mm -hmm. when you're looking at the footage, it's powerful. Right. It was a powerful moment. When you took off those headphones and you pulled up the eye shield, what were you feeling when it was over? I was feeling a little... I wasn't feeling as drained as I was after we had done the double SDs. <laughs> right. But I was feeling a little out of place. Uh -huh. Like for a moment, I was like, I was like, okay, am I out of it? Have I closed? The that was the first thing I thought. Have I closed the door? Okay. I took a deep breath okay. and I was out. But I know, especially after talking to Spence, I know I need to do more. You will find m ways of grounding yourself that work for yourself. Right. And it could be something as simple as, a moment of pause mm -hmm. and a deep breath. Right. It could be that simple. So don't, that seemed to work for you in the moment because you came back around to us and were able to jump into the double S yeah. right thereafter. Yeah. That was a little harder to snap back from, but yeah. Now my last question mm -hmm. for you before we close things out here. How has that first experience overall impacted you as an investigator? Especially after I did auto writing for what this is after what two years mm -hmm. of seeing shadow figures, mm -hmm. of catching yeah. EVPs, of hearing yeah. disembodied voices. But something about the automatic writing made me go, this really is a bigger, far more uh, expansive world that I am stepping into. Yeah. And there is so little I know. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and I think just as, you know, as your friend, as someone who's observed your journey in that m moment 
I think, because you were using writing as a means of yep. Yep. connection, I saw something a little bit more intimate with you forming in terms of a connection this to that greater other. Very intimate. This, yeah. is very, this isn't now just me working with tech and, and, right. and playing around with toys. Yeah. This is something very intimate and very uh, close. Yeah. And yeah, it, I feel like my boundaries got a little more, yeah. uh, a, li a, a little, they, they expanded. They, it's become a wider, a wider FOV, if you will. I like that. I like and that. Uh, now I'm getting the gamer terms, so I got to be careful about that. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Have you tried automatic writing? What What are your thoughts on it? What are your thoughts in general on automatic writing? If you haven't even tried it, we'd love to hear from you about that. You know how you can do that. Got this comment section under the video. Leave your comment there. We would love to hear from you while you're there. Like the video if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel. Enable those notifications so you know when there's more content just like this. And don't forget, you can also become a member of the channel. That's where you get emotes, you get some behind the scenes footage, you get some bloopers, and you also get extra investigations that didn't make it to the final cut. All these interactions, whether it's the likes and subscribes or becoming a member, they all help us out in so many different ways here at Old Spirits. But thank you all very much for joining us. On behalf of everyone here, take care, stay safe, and we'll see you in the field.